everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is going to be a continuation of the frog page that I've been coloring in Botanicum by Maria Trolle. So I have my coloring book and I've got my swatch chart for my Derwent Ink Tents and my Derwent Ink Tents pencils because this whole entire page has been done with these pencils and I love how it's turning out. I will have all of the videos that I have done so far in a playlist and I will put a link in the upper right hand corner so that if you would like to follow this color along you can. I thought for this video it would be fun to go through the whole entire process of how I choose my colors and sort of just share my thought process with you all so that's what we're going to do today. If you check the description box down below I will have links down there to my email list, my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. I also now have channel membership if you would like more information on that you can click the join button down below the video. So if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, this is the page that we're working on. And I have to finish the stem of the iris as well as the leaves. But the first thing I wanna do is color the stem here. And so we need to figure out colors and that's gonna be a little bit more complicated. You can see that the frog is sitting right up against the stem of the iris. Usually in a case like this, we would be able to choose contrasting colors from different color families and all of the colors would come together really beautifully and one object would stand out from the other object on the coloring page. But in this case, the stem of the iris is naturally going to be green. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to choose different greens from the green that we used on the frog so that the stem of the iris stands out from the frog. We don't get that many greens. I mean, we get a good amount of them, but there's only 72 colors. We get our olivier greens, and then we get some more true greens up through here, and then we get a couple shades of teal here before we move into our blues. So since I've already used some golden yellows and some of the more olive greens on the frog, I'm going to have to choose greens that are quite a bit different so that the frog stands out and is separate from the stem of the iris. So I went back and watched the video to see what colors I used here on the frog. And the colors I used were the leaf green, fern, and mustard. So I used these three colors right here. So we need to go a little bit away from that undertone so that our greens in the stem of the iris and on the leaves look a little bit different. So I pulled up a picture of an iris that has the actual stem on it because the one that I used to follow when I colored the iris did not have a stem. It was just the top part here. So I looked that up. I matched up some colors. So I have the apple green, which is really pretty bright and vibrant. And then I decided to go here with the hooker's green. I think those two will be pretty together, but we're gonna test them out. I also have Ionian green which is right here, but I'm not sure if I want to add a little bit of something else to them. We're gonna go with those first and see how they look. Let's go ahead and test them out and see how they look together. So here's the Ionian green, and then the hooker's green, and the apple green. And so far they look quite a bit different than what we have going on with the frog. So let's go ahead and activate them and see what they look like. I think those will be pretty. I think I like those. So like I said, I always like to test my colors first. And if you look at these two greens next to each other, one set of greens does stand out from the other greens that I used because the other ones had more of an olive undertone. So let's go ahead and start laying down some of our colors. I'm gonna start with my lightest color, which is the apple green. And I'm just gonna start laying some of this down. And I love using the Derwent Ink Tents. They are such nice pencils and it's amazing how intense the color gets once you activate it. Let's go ahead and add some of the hooker's green in here. So I think I decided I wanted to add a little bit of a yellow, but I don't want it to be too, too bright and I want it to be more muted to sort of go along with everything else we have going on here. So I grabbed the Sicilian yellow here and I'm gonna add a little bit of that and I think that will give it a nice little pop. I'm adding a little bit down in here on the bottom part of the stem and then I'm gonna use my apple green to go right over the top of it and then I'll come in with my darker shades. 
I think the Sicilian yellow will be pretty blended into some of these other colors. See how that green is quite a bit different than what we have going on there with the frog. But anytime you need to use colors that are similar right up against one another, that's what I would do is just use colors that have two different undertones. So like it's okay that you're using greens, but just choose greens that have a different undertone to them. And when they're up against one another, they're not going to blend right in together. They're gonna stand out from one another still. Let me go ahead and grab some of the hookers green and blend this into some of these areas over here. This isn't even my darkest color. I have another color here that I still need to come and add in. Oh, and I totally forgot. I have to grab the colors that I used previously on the frog because I forgot his two little cute toes right here. <laughs> Everybody in the comments section of my last video was like, you forgot his little toes, you forgot his little toes. <laughs> so I still have to go back and color those in. Okay, let me turn the book a little bit here and start adding in some of this color up here. And then down here on the bottom leaf, we need some of the darker color. Let me make sure I get some of this Sicilian yellow in here blend that into that apple green and some of these other colors. That apple green and the Sicilian should make for a really nice pop of color all throughout these leaves. I'm just blending some of this right into that Sicilian yellow up there. Now let's go ahead and grab the darkest color, which is the Ionian green. I think I'm saying that right. Hopefully I am. <laughs> and I'm going to start adding some of this anywhere that I need a little bit of shadow. So anywhere that this little frog has his cute little toes or feet or any part of his body up against the stem. I'm gonna add some more color in those areas. And then over here along the edges, and then down here, I wanna make sure it's quite a bit darker because I want this leaf to stand out from the stem. And then over here, I'm just going to add some of this color too because I want the bottoms of the leaves to stand out just a bit, but I do want some of this color down here, right where this leaf is touching the stem and then along the edges here. I don't think I finished this bottom part with the other colors, so I need to come back and do that. Okay, so I really wanna see what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna start blending some of this out with the water. I have my Derwent water brush here and this is the number one, so it does have the thinner tip on it. And I'm gonna use this just to squeeze a little bit, make sure I have a nice flow of water. And then I'm gonna start in the center where I have my lightest colors. And then I'm gonna pull the darkest colors into that. Oh wow, look how bright and vibrant and gorgeous that is getting. These pencils are definitely like magic. <laughs> I absolutely love them. So I'm just pulling some of this color up into where I have that Sicilian yellow. Oh, look how pretty. So it actually went from looking like this to looking like that. Look at the big, huge difference. Let's go ahead and do this part down here. Now I'm starting in the center. I think we're gonna need more color in this section down here. We probably didn't have enough layers of color because this part looks much better, but you can layer with these. So we will make sure we get plenty of color down there. I think I wanna add a little bit of the Sicilian yellow in here. I do have a napkin here also, and I feel like that's pretty important when you're using the Derwent ink tents to always have a napkin off to the side. I sometimes use it if I get color where I don't want or I feel like I put down too much water. I will just tap it and pull some of that color up and it really, really helps. But I think the contrast between these greens is really, really nice because the frog still stands out from the stem. Oh my gosh, look at that Sicilian yellow, how beautiful it is. I'm so glad I decided to add yellow in there and it's not too bright and overpowering. It still looks really, really pretty. I didn't wanna to add too many colors that were too bright because I don't wanna take away from my frog here and the colors on him, although he has really pretty highlights with that yellow, it looks more gold than it does a bright, bright yellow. And so I definitely didn't wanna take away from that when I chose my yellow. So I wanted to choose something that was a little bit more muted rather than super bright. And I mean, the apple green is still fairly bright and it's really pretty. So the two of them blended together, they're still bright, they're just not overpowering. Let me go ahead and get in these little areas here. This is the Sicilian yellow. 
and I'm just going to add a little bit of apple green in with it. Super, super pretty. Okay, so let's start blending out some of the colors in the leaves here. And I'm gonna start where the Sicilian yellow is and I'm just going to pull that color down into some of the other colors and see what we can come up with. And I'm just doing really short strokes and blending the colors into each other. And I don't wanna do it too quickly because I wanna make sure I'm not dragging the colors where I don't want them. And some of this video will probably be set to music because I need to concentrate on what I'm doing. And sometimes when I keep talking through the whole thing, <laughs> it messes up my concentration. And I just don't wanna mess this up because I've worked so hard on this page. And I love the way that it's turning out. Okay, so that one's definitely going to need a lot more of some of our darker colors. And I have to wait for all of these other areas to dry before I go back over them again. But now we're gonna go ahead and blend some of this out. Let me go ahead and go over the Sicilian yellow first, and I'm gonna pull that down into some of this apple green. Oh, look how pretty. And then down into my darkest color. And again, I'm just using short strokes so that I could make sure the colors don't get pulled into some areas where I don't want them to. Now I'm pulling some of this darker color up into the lighter colors. Wow, look how dark and vibrant that just got. <laughs> so pretty. I love these pencils. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same for up here and finish this leaf. And then we're going to wait for it to dry and we're going to come back and add more color because I don't think I got too much color on this one. I don't even know if I used my darker color on this one, but that's okay because we're going to come back and add it. So now it's time to come back and add a whole lot more depth. I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the darkest color that I had, the Ionian green. And I did sharpen it so we have a nice sharp tip here. And I think I'm going to go over the areas that I started with so this way I can make sure that those areas are dry already so I want a little bit more down in here but you'll see as I go over some of this how much darker and more intense the colors get it's so fun to watch and then once I activate them it's going to be even more intense I don't think I had too much color down here on this one but I want to make sure that I add quite a bit of depth down in here and then in here where I've got his little feet again I want there to be a whole lot more depth in those areas and then again over here right under his little toes and I'm not even sure I even used this darker color here so I'm gonna add quite a bit of it here at the top of the stem and I am still gonna have to come back and fix his two little toes here that I miss <laughs> here and get a little bit more depth up here in the top of the stem and then down here as well. I just want to make sure I'm creating separate areas between all of these pieces of the stem. Now I have the hookers green and I'm going to blend some of this right into those other colors or actually the darkest color that I just added. And so we could create sort of a combination of those two colors in some of these areas here. I just think a blend of the two colors together is really going to stand out and create that contrast I'm looking for between the stem and the frog. Now I have my Sicilian yellow and I'm really going to add a lot of this in here using quite a bit more pressure because I want to get quite a bit of that color in there so that when I activate it, that yellow is really gonna stand out. And remember, these colors, they layer right over each other. Even if the colors are darker, than the other color. So like this yellow will layer right over the top of these greens that I lay down here and it'll create a really pretty blend of the colors. And now I have my apple green and I wanna make sure I get some of that in there too. And hopefully when I come back over and activate this with water, it will be the final layer that I really need. Okay, so before we go on to the leaves, let's go ahead and activate that part with water. down here and do the bottom and I need to brush this off just a little bit because I want to go over that yellow part there first. Now let's do the center. Again I'm going to go over the yellow first and then I am going, oops, oh my goodness. <laughs> I pulled the color into the frog. I didn't want to do that. Okay I think that part looks nice. 
Let's try this again without pulling it into the frog. Let's come up here and do the same thing. I'm gonna go over the darkest first this time, which I usually don't do, but I wanna see how dark I can get this and how much more depth is going to be created here. And then I'm gonna wipe it off and then I'm going to come into the yellow. And that worked. You just have to be really careful if you do it that way. Now let's get this part here and then I'm gonna come down in here and then pull it back towards the darkest color. And I'm gonna do that over here as well. And then here I'm gonna start with the lightest and pull that into the darkest. Okay, so let's work on this leaf here a little bit and see how much more color we can get in here. Oh wow, look at that color activating. That is so pretty. I don't wanna to have too much of that darkest color, so I'm gonna go really, really lightly here. that one is pretty so far. Let's go ahead and add some more color to this leaf here so that we could let this one dry and then come back. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Ionian Green and I'm going to start adding some of this darker color just in certain places here. And I'm going to use this color just to line these just to create a little bit more depth here. And we'll see how this looks once we activate it with water. Now I have the hookers green and I'm gonna add a little bit of this in here. And I'm just spreading that Ionian green out just a little bit, this color. I mean, y'all, these work the same way as your typical color pencil does. They just activate with water, and then once you activate them with the water, color intensifies so much. But they layer the same way, and they blend together the same way, and everything else. The only difference is the water, but they're so much fun to work with. I'm gonna put quite a bit of the Sicilian yellow in some of these areas to really make this stand out. Okay, so now I have my water brush and we are going to go over this one. And I'm gonna go over some of the darker areas first. A little bit different than what I'm used to, but I've got all these lines in the leaves. And so I'm trying to be a little more creative and do something with these lines to use the artwork and try to make these leaves stand out a little bit more than they would if I had just blended all the colors together. And I feel like it's very important that I'm using the smallest Derwent water brush because I'm able to get into those little tiny, tiny, small spaces. Like I said, this is the number one and then it comes with a number two and a number three. And as the numbers go up, the brushes get wider. And now I'm going to see how much I can make that yellow pop right there in the center. Oh wow, that's pretty. I am so glad I decided to grab the Sicilian yellow and use that in here as well. I think it gave these leaves exactly what they needed. Let's go ahead and finish this bottom leaf. I'm gonna grab my Sicilian yellow first because I really want to intensify this color because I really love how this one turned out. And so I'm gonna to try to make this one look quite a bit like that one. Now I have the hookers green. I'm just gonna blend some of this color right back in and add another layer. Now I have the apple green and I'm gonna use this to blend a little bit of it into the Sicilian yellow. And now I'm gonna get my Ionian green and we are going to try to create a little bit more depth with this color like I did in this leaf here. Again, I'm just following these lines because I want it to have a little bit more depth. And of course, once we activate it, you'll see how dark that gets. Okay, so let's go over the darkest color here. Oh my gosh, look how dark that is. What a difference. So first I'm gonna come in here and add quite a bit more of the Sicilian yellow. And I'm gonna blend some of the apple green right into that color. Oh, I love that bright pop of apple green. That's so pretty. I don't think I'm gonna add any of the hookers green because I really want that apple green to pop right there. But I am gonna grab the Ionian green and I am going to intensify some of these areas just a little bit more to really make them stand out. And then when I come back and go over these, I'm just going to have to go really, really lightly so that I don't drag this color or this darkest color into the areas that I don't want it. 
So let me go ahead and blend some of this out with the water brush. And now I want to come back and intensify that yellow just a little bit. So I'm going over just where the yellow is just to brighten that up and blend it in just a little. And then I'm brushing off my brush and I'm going to come down here and do the same thing. And then let me go over that apple green right in here. Oh my gosh, that color is so pretty. I'm gonna work on this leaf down here just a little bit. I wanna make the stem of this iris look perfect. <laughs> so I've got the Sicilian yellow. I just really wanna see lots of pops of color in here. And you can see that this color just layers right over the top of some of these other colors. I love that about these pencils. And then I wanna blend some of the apple green in there. just love how these colors look together. So now I'm going to go over the Sicilian yellow areas and I'm just going to activate those. And now I'm just going over the darker colors and then down here where I had added some of the apple green. I hope that y'all were able to see that you can use colors from the same color family, but use colors with different undertones to still be able to have the colors stand out from one another. So because we used a lot of more olive tones here on our cute little frog prints, I decided to go with different shades of green with a different undertone to do the stem of the iris. And I think it turned out really pretty. But in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and do the dragonfly. And then in the following video, we will be doing the background tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Everything you've seen in this video will be linked in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.